Let's talk about expertise and creativity. An expert is someone who has extensive knowledge based on research, experience or their occupation within a particular domain. They're thought to have specialized knowledge beyond the average person. So experts are able to solve problems within their field with a higher success rate than novices. So why? What is the difference between an expert and the average Joe? Well, perhaps the most obvious thing is that experts possess more knowledge about their fields. It's estimated that experts have over 50,000 hours of experience in a particular domain, as opposed to a novice, which has just around about a thousand. So there's a huge amount of experience and training and skills that are needed in order for you to be considered an expert in any kind of field. But it's not just having more knowledge. The key thing about experts is that they actually structure their knowledge differently to the average person. The novice or the average person tends to structure their knowledge at a very superficial level. They look at just the surface features. Whereas the expert, having much more experience than the novice, tends to look at the deep structure of, uh, of, of their knowledge and makes the connections between um, the dots in a different way. For example, researchers ask uh, physics professors and freshmen at college to organize 24 physics problems into categories. The novice, as you can see here on the left, they tended to group problems together based on how similarly they looked. So you can see that they put problem 23 and problem 24 together because they both involve inclined planes. Superficially, they look very similar. But in fact, the physics that's involved is very different. Compared to what the experts, how they categorize the problems over here on the right, they, in contrast, grouped problems 21 and 24 together. Superficially, they look very different. One involves an inclined plane and one involves a spring. But the structural feature, the underlying principle of physics, is exactly the same. They both deal with conservation of energy. So the expert had the experience and the knowledge to be able to understand the structural features and group that knowledge accordingly. Whereas the novice, not having that experience, that, that knowledge, grouped the information together on very superficial features. Another key difference between novices and experts is that experts tend to spend more time analyzing the problem. So experts are slower at first. Um, the novice might run ahead and try to solve and come up with a solution quickly, whereas the expert takes their time tries to understand the issue rather than come up with a solution. Einstein very famously um, is quoted as saying that if he was given an hour to solve a problem, he would spend 55 minutes thinking about it and then would come up about with the solution within the last five minutes. So experts spend a lot more time trying to understand those deeper principles rather than novices that try to come up with a solution quickly by looking at those surface features. So what's the relationship between expertise and creativity? Is there a relationship, do you think uh, experts are more creative or less creative? Well, there's evidence to support both sides. Some experts are extremely creative. For example, Einstein, again, um, used visualization a lot in his theories. Uh, in fact, he's well known for actually disliking maths. He would spend a lot of time thinking of images, kind of creating uh, thoughts and ideas with his imagination. And once he came up with an idea, then he would try to use math to back up his thoughts, his imagination, and so on. Steve Jobs um, has also been quoted as saying that 
People who are thought of as creative tend to draw from their experiences and they draw the lines, they connect the dots between them. So creative people have more experiences or at least spend more time thinking about their experiences. Novices, on the other hand, don't have enough dots to connect. So they often come up with very standard or linear solutions without thinking about the broad perspective. So Steve Jobs said it's all about having the experience and being able to have that creativity of thought to connect the dots in new and exciting ways. On the other hand, um, some research shows that people who are very entrenched in their fields that spent 30, 40, 50 years of their lives in their particular domain uh, tend to be less likely to be open to new ideas. Um, so they have a very entrenched way of thinking. They, they know their domain and then they know how other people have thought about it before. And it might be new people that come in with fresh minds, the novices that think about things in fresh and new and exciting ways. Um, and not the expert that tends to be creative. So basically there are there's evidence on both sides that experts can be creative thinkers, thinkers but at the same time they might uh, be constrained by their own uh, depth of knowledge. A little disclaimer though, um, experts are no better than novices when given uh, problems outside of their field. So just because you might um, be playing against a chess master and they are great at being able to play chess with you does not necessarily mean that if you gave them a different type of problem, a math problem or an anagram or a real life problem, that they would be able to transfer their expertise from one domain to another. So what is creativity? Creativity is innovation. It's innovative thinking, it's coming up with novel ideas, it's creating those new connections between existing ideas, thinking outside of the box, literally. So when we looked at the problem solving chapter last time, a lot of the solutions had a definitive end answer. And that's an example of convergent thinking. We try to bring our thoughts uh, so to make them converge to find one correct answer. In contrast then, creativity deals with divergent thinking. The key here is to come up with a large number of potential solutions. There is no one correct answer at the end, it's very open-ended. Um, you might have done this before when you have like a brainstorming session. The idea is to come up with so many different ideas, some of them good, and some of them bad, but the idea is to generate lots of ideas. These are examples of divergent thinking. We can actually train people to try to think more creative, create, sorry, excuse me, creatively. Uh, this is called creative cognition. Uh, some jobs actually spend some time, maybe an afternoon every Friday, and encourage their employees to try and think of new techniques, new products for their business, to try and uh, help deliver the, uh, the, the business in, in new and in, in innovative ways. And those ideas that kind of precede the end finished creative product are called pre-inventive forms. Uh, Thomas Edison was very famously took out almost uh, 1,100 patents for all the different ideas that he, he came up with. Um, when we come up with these creative forms, we are thinking as we are producing at the same time. And we come up with lots of different um, ideas, some that don't work so well, but some that do work so well. So we can take some of those ideas, those initial ideas, we kind of evaluate them, and they serve as a springboard for uh, new ideas and so on. Uh, so it just takes one good idea to come out of those many, many bad ideas. So the best idea, if the way, if you're trying to think creative, creatively, is not to give yourself any constraints, to not give yourself a blueprint to follow. 
Uh, if you want someone to come up with a creative solution to a problem, don't tell them how to do it. Let them think outside of the box. Have you guys seen the movie Avatar? It's from a few years ago. If you think about it, the director, James Cameron, spent over a decade trying to create a alien race. Um, he came up with a you know an alien uh, body, a new language, a new world, and in the end, if you think about it, it was pretty much similar to humans, uh, with the absence of the blue skin and the slightly pointy ears and the tail. The avatar race was pretty much human, so maybe our ability to think about or design alien forms are constrained by how we function and how we see ourselves as human. He could have created a race to be anything he wanted to be, but he pretty much created a race of blue people. Okay, let's finish up by uh, giving you some examples to help you see if you can think creatively. So I'm going to give you three scenarios and let's see if you can come up with a creative solution as an answer. Here's one. A man lives on the 12th floor of an apartment building. Every morning, he takes the elevator down to the lobby and leaves the building. In the evening, he gets back into the elevator and if there is someone else in the elevator, or if it was raining that day, he goes back to his floor directly. Otherwise, he goes to the 10th floor and walks up two flights of stairs to his apartment. Why? Take a few moments to see if you can come up with a few creative solutions to this scenario. Okay, here's number two. A body is discovered in a park in Chicago in the middle of summer. It has a fractured skull and many other broken bones, but the cause of death was hypothermia. How could this be? Again, Give yourself a few moments, pause the video, and see if you can come up with a few creative solutions. Okay, here's the last and third scenario. A man walks into a bar and asks for a drink. The bartender pulls out a gun and points it at him. The man says, thank you, and walks out. Why? Okay. For the last time, have a few moments, pause the video, see if you can come up with some creative solutions. Are you ready for some answers? Have you really thought about it yet? You sure you've thought up with some creative solutions to the problems? You sure? Okay, here we go. So remember this one, the man, he's living on the 12th floor. He goes down in the elevator when he comes back up. If there's someone with him, or if it was raining, he goes back to the 12th floor. But if not, he has to go to the 10th floor and then walk up the two flights. Why? Well, it's because he's a little person. So when he gets back in the elevator, he's not tall enough to reach the 12th button. So if someone's with him, they can press it for him. Or if it was raining that day, he has an umbrella to press the 12th button. If not, he only can reach uh, up to number 10. So he has to press number 10 and then walk up the rest of the way. How about this one? Uh, body discovered in the Chicago. It's uh, full of broken bones, but the de cause of death was hypothermia. How about a stowaway on a plane that uh, unfortunately freezes in uh, 35,000 feet and then drops from the plane, causing those broken bones, bones. Okay, last up. Man walks into the bar, the bartender points a gun at him. He says thanks and walks out. Oh, the guy has hiccups and the shock from the gun caused him to stop hiccuping. How did you do? Did you come up with those creative solutions? <laughs> <laughs>